Welcome back again to Lesson 13, Material Operations Part 3 of the SDS2 Getting Started series. We will now continue with adding in material as well as some other operations. Let's add a cap to this bent plate pour stop using rectangular plate. First of all, I'm going to come in here and rotate around and surface to this particular edge. Then I'm going to add in some construction lines to this material. Now, it's a good practice sometimes to clear off any construction lines that may have been added that will cause some selection issues. Now, using my ruler, I'm going to determine the dimension of this plate for the width that I want to use. We can see that it's going to be five and three quarters. Okay, next, select rectangular plate and select the member. Now if I select any material on this member the system will go ahead and select the entire member. Next I'm going to point one for the material which is the left end now, point two the right end of the material and let's go ahead and add in a plate. Material thickness one quarter of an inch material width I've already typed in five and three quarters now as we go down here we can see order length and working point distance those are the actual two points that I selected between point one and point two grade of material now let's deal with this thickness reference point so from those two points in 3D space I have selected if I go ahead and say far side that means that that reference point is far side meaning the plate will come towards me if I go ahead and select near side from those two points again that will force the plate to go away from me because we're telling the system where is that thickness reference point so the point is near side of that material center is pretty obvious the way I selected this going from the first point left end second point right end the material will be going down in this direction if I were to go from the right end here is my first point to this left side as my second point the material would go ahead and be forced up. Now this was my first point selected. This will be my top left end setting, bottom left end setting, top right end setting, bottom right end setting. Let's go ahead and put a clip here. Add in one inch for the clip. Go ahead and hit OK again we have that rotate material I do not need to rotate that material right now dimensional reference point I can go ahead and place it right here using intersection construction line right at that point of the beam and again the system's asking me if I want to add more material to this I'm done I'm going to right click and let's go ahead and take a look at this we can see that now I've added in that plate again that reference point that line was on the this outer edge here so this was near side from the view I was looking at and place the plate going inward away from me let's clear off these construction lines because we no longer need them now okay let's go ahead and surface the top of this bent plate material and now what we're going to do is we're going to add in some studs these studs are going to be three inches from the top of beam and the reason we're adding these studs is because I want to show you the copy and repeat command. Let's go ahead and determine how long this needs to be. I'm going to add in a construction line just to make it a little bit easier. And using my ruler commands, I will then determine intersection construction line to keep my points on the same plane that we have a total of 26 6 inches. Now I want to have my studs at 1 foot 6 after doing a little bit of math we determine that we're going to need to add a construction line over here at six inches for the first location and then we're going to one foot six at seventeen and now we have those points that we can locate let's go and add in a construction line again this time I'm going to use my vertex point be very careful vertex point because it snaps to every single edge it finds. So I want to make sure that I select the correct edge. 
and then we're going to go ahead and add in our studs we are going to be three inches from the top of steel and we know that this is a quarter inch thick that means I need to go up two and three quarters I'm going to use my relative depth command two and three quarters coming towards me in the screen so I'm now currently two and three quarters up we can see this right here from 114.9 three inches above 114.6 which is my top of steel oh yes let's add in one more construction line for the length of the stud let's go ahead and place this four inches and then go down to the material shear stud add I'm gonna locate the member to add the shear stud to using my intersection construction line once again for point one and point two fill in all the information for that particular shear stud you'll notice that we have an option here to create a threaded stud we're gonna go ahead and use a shear stud go ahead and hit OK rotation is correct locate dimensional reference point and now I can go ahead if you notice at the top left of your screen I can hit the middle button to repeat the next stud now if I want to pan or navigate I can hold down shift to pan and then I could go ahead and locate the next stud I can also continue to go ahead and hit the control which allow me to do a navigation once which allows me to do some rotate or whatever zooming in zooming out but usually you can also zoom in and zoom out by simply using your scroll wheel let's stop right here by right clicking I'm going to return and we can see that these three studs have been added let's go ahead now and copy these studs I'm going to select copy I'm going to select the stud right click and hit OK locate a reference point I want to stay on the same plane so using intersection construction line select the member to copy to and then I can come in here using my scroll wheel as I scroll in and out using intersection construction line I can go ahead and locate the next stud the next stud the next stud go ahead and pan over and continue to add in the rest of these studs I'm going to return because I believe that we already have established the point of the copy condition. Let's go ahead and take a look at the material move. Now using material move I can go ahead and select a piece of material, go ahead and select OK, reference point or insertion point as some like to call it, and I can select the member to move to. I can go ahead and just move it within this particular member by selecting the same member or I can select another member to move this or multiple materials too. Let's go ahead and select this member and just move to the next stud. Now one thing I would like to mention while we're talking about adding in studs. When you add in studs, when you shorten the drawing, the system will try to shorten this drawing. The problem is it's going to also have to create all these studs. The reason I bring this up is what some people do is they'll put the first stud in, the last stud, and for all the repeated stud they'll just copy the material one on top of another. Now you remember that members, with members you could not put one member on top of another but that's not the case with material. So with some people again they'll put the first stud, the last stud, and all the intermediate studs they'll put in the same location. You might say why bother doing that? Because then you'll have the correct count of materials in the bill of material. And this way you can shorten your drawing so it fits easier onto a page. This will conclude part three of the material operations.